Um, hey there and good morning or afternoon, whatever time it might be that you're joining us here at the nonprofit show. We are so glad to have you back. And I am so glad to have you back, Ashley Bright. Ashley joins us. He's the message fixer. And he's going to talk to us today about overcoming stage fright and sharing five easy tips with you. So stay with us. It's a poignant conversation because many of us in the nonprofit space are often making presentations. So it's a, a good topic for us to talk about. So hopefully, Ashley, um, you yourself don't have stage fright in this moment, but if you do, I know you've got your own five tips for that. <laughs> and um, Julie and I are just so glad to be here with you and all of you, our viewers and our listeners each and every day. Julia Patrick is here, CEO. She is the at the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, her nonprofit nerd, but yours too, CEO of The Raven Group, and really honored to serve alongside as a co-host for The Nonprofit Show. We owe so much gratitude to our amazing partners. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our presenting sponsors. I'm going to give a verbal shout out to our friends over at Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, as well as the nonprofit tech talk. So thank you to these companies. You know, I like to remind everyone every day that these companies are here for you. They're not just here for the nonprofit show, although we are so grateful that they are. But they're really here for you and your support. So please do lean into them because they are certainly there to lean into you. And hey, we are celebrating uh, moving into uh, many episodes and you can find all of them on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV. And you can also listen to us on the podcast. So anywhere you stream your podcast, go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show there as well. So we have a lot happening, a lot going on, really excited uh, for today's conversation. You know, again, coming up on nearly 800 episodes and Ashley, thank you for saying yes to join us again. You have been on the show before. And again, for our viewers and our listeners, this is Ashley Bright, CEO and the Message Fixer. What have you been up to, my friend? Well, first of all, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, and it's great to see your smiling faces again. It is my, this is my second or third time on, and I'm excited to be back. Uh, I have been busy, uh, you know, with with COVID sort of, you know, hopefully in the background for for the next while. Um, we've been things have been opening up, and so I've been doing a lot of uh, speaking gigs. Good. I've had the good fortune to be in uh, Toronto and Vegas, and I've actually made a couple trips out to North and South Dakota. And uh, it's been wonderful getting re reconnected with people and uh, looking out from the stage and seeing those smiling faces all ready to learn and, and be empowered. And so I'm loving it. And other than that, I've been working on some uh, a variety of different uh, workshops and some new nonprofit focused workshops, which we can talk about maybe towards the end. Good. But uh, I'm excited to be here. And, and I can't believe we haven't talked about this topic yet. This is such a elephant in the room kind of topic. It is. It is. It really is, Ashley. And I think, you know, um, we think a lot of times, oh, it's like getting up on a stage and making the big pitch or whatever. But I think we need to back it up because I think it could be speaking in front of your, a board, making a presentation to a funder or for a, a grantor. It, it can be a smaller but intimidating group. And so I love this concept and I know you're going to help a lot of people. I mean, Jared and I, as we show up today in our matching outfits um, <laughs> that we did not plan unplanned. on. Unplanned. <laughs> unplanned, but I just got to say, it does speak to a bigger issue about being the Bobsy twins. However, um, you've got five steps and the first one is kind of an unexpected one. Exercise and stretch. What does that look like? Well, so so when we think about that that fight or flight, that anxiety, that fear you feel going into your point to any situation, could be a job interview, could be meeting with the board, could be getting up on stage, could be getting on a Zoom call. Um, you've got that nervous energy. And part of that is that your body is, we're hardwired to survive. And so your body's doing the thing it's supposed to do. It's giving you that energy so that you can be ready to fight 
or flight, as it says. Um, so one of the things that I always recommend and that I do personally is to do my best to burn off as much of that energy as I can. And so for everybody, that's going to be a little bit different. For me, I'll, I'll usually go for a run, maybe do some yoga or workout of some sort. But the idea is you're just sort of minimizing the amount of energy that your body is going to give you. So hopefully starting to kind of tap down that, that nervousness and that anxiety that, that comes from it. So that's what I do. And that's how I approach it. You know, this is, again, such a, a critical talking point for us to take because you know, whether we are innately an introvert, an extrovert, somewhere in between, you know, for, for all of you, I think you can only imagine I am a complete extrovert and have always been right. But I have Fuck. to, own, I know, I, have <laughs> I can't to own, believe it. <laughs> own up that I still get stage fright, you know, even with the amount of presentations, the amount of speaking opportunities, my extrovert energy, I still experience stage fright. So isn't that actually, before we go on to step number two, isn't that kind of a sign of a, a it's a good thing or, or are we just selling ourselves something? I mean, because I've always heard if you don't have stage fright, then you've got a bigger problem. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, it's an inherently a, a human thing. I mean, as I said, you're hardwired for this. And so I've, I've heard many accounts of, you know, very famous people, people that are on stage all the time that have some sort of a ritual they go through before they go on stage, right. some more extreme than others, um, because that is just, uh, it's just part of the game. I heard a wonderful quote years ago that said, you know, you're not really going to be able to, to minimize the butterflies. The trick is getting them to fly in formation. Oh, I love that. I love you know? that. And I've I, not I, heard that. Yeah, and it's been attributed to a few different people, but I just love the essence of that quote, which is like you're not gonna dis you're not gonna make them disappear. It's about learning how to yeah. adapt and and have a level of control over it so that you yeah. you can go on stage and be successful. Oh, good. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I think it's really important to talk about that because so many people, you know, have said to me in my career, like, oh, I know it's no problem for you. And I was like, no, 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 trust me. I still go through a process yeah. of my own of preparation and stress and anxiety and, and all of that. So as we talk about this, you know, just really looking at it from all different lens, mm -hmm. I love the exercise and stretch. I don't think that I could go out and run because that would be even more stressful for me. But as you said, yeah. for us to find Find what that means for us. Yeah, what it could be stretching, it could be meditation. I mean, you know, the, the point is that you're taking some time to put some concerted effort into trying to minimize that that energy. I think that's probably the best way to sum it up. Okay, great. Well, that was tip number one. So moving into overcoming stage fright, tip number two, you have here shift nervous energy to passion. Talk to us about that one. Certainly. So the previous one was very much about what's going on in, with your body. This one is very much about what's going on in your mind. Okay. Many times our mind, again, it's sort of about survival. And so it's trying to stop you from putting yourself in a situation where you may be vulnerable. And so it's going to be telling you potentially like, you know, don't go do this. You're going to make a mistake. You're going to screw up. People aren't going to believe you, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that kind of inner critic. Mm -hmm. And so part of this exercise is really taking some conscious effort and some time to shift that focus from that fear to the value that you can be providing. Okay, mm -hmm. whatever situation you're walking into, you have value, you have knowledge, you have expertise, you have something to share that mm -hmm. other people are there to hear. And so shifting from that fear and I'm going to fail to I'm going to provide so much value mm -hmm. and bringing that passion forward for what you're doing, I think especially in the nonprofit space, people are very passionate about what they're doing. And so if you can bring that forward, not only does that help you feel more confident and feel better, but it's also going to resonate with your audience. Okay. They're going to feel that passion. They're going to want to participate. And, uh, and so it's incredibly important to just really kind of shift your mindset to the value, the passion, the impact that you can have. You know, Julia, think about this. We've had, uh, again, nearly 800 episodes and probably over 650 unique guests like yourself, Ashley. Oh, yeah. And we go through that all the time, right? Reminding the guest, you are the expert. Yeah. You know, this is your passion. This is what you know, live, eat, sleep, breathe all the time. Mm -hmm. So I love really like having that mindset to shift what could be nervous energy 
to passion because you're right. We're coming, we're coming from a place of a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And time served time served. Okay. Now this one, I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say. And I'm going to switch it up because I'm going to expand my presence with my (laughs) bright glasses because I have waited for a long time to get these glasses on. They look wonderful. They're prescription, dude. So, I mean, (laughs) I got to say, okay, what does expand your presence mean? Is it funky glasses? It could be. It could be. It's whatever it is. Much like the first couple, it's it's sort of whatever works for you. But <laughs> the idea here, I mean, we've heard this this sort of old, I don't know if there's truth to it, but you know, if there's a bear trying to run at you, you want to look big. Personally, I've never been in that situation, so I'm not sure how that would work. But um, it's very much this idea of how your physiology and, and what you're doing with your body can help transform how you feel. And some of you may be aware of a woman named Amy Cuddy who is a social psychologist and she's got a couple of wonderful TED talks out there, but she talks mm-hmm. about the power and they've actually studied this. There is, there is scientific data to back this up that if you hold certain poses, power poses where you're large and you're feeling strong yeah. before you walk into an interview, you go on stage, you walk into a meeting that it actually changes sort of your entire sort of outlook and the feeling that you have. And so you feel more confident, you feel more powerful, uh, similar to the, the previous tip, it's helping you recognize that passion, that value, that impact that you can have. Yeah. And I love that you address mm-hmm. this because, you know, again, for women, we have been taught mm-hmm. to stay small, right? Don't take up space mm-hmm. and you want to look and appear smaller, you know, thinner. And that's really, I think from like, um, um, an attraction, probably, you know, sexual in nature, um, state, but really what you talk about with Amy, this power posing that she talks about is fantastic. And that's for all, all people, every single person. So thank you for bringing her up. She's one of my favorites, right? Along with Brene Brown. Um, (laughs) but yeah, Amy is fantastic. And, uh, what she shares in that is really, really amazing. So really expanding our presence Mm -hmm. does make that, that shift. I want to say like in our neurons. Yes. Yes. It's, it's hardwired. It it really transforms sort of your entire body and your entire outlook and the feeling that you have. And it's only a couple minutes, you know, if you can find a quiet spot to get in that position and hold that, um, I will admit to to doing that in bathroom stalls at different yes. different locations when I'm about to go on stage. But yes. you just stand there and you kind of get in the zone and you get ready to walk out there and be powerful. Yes. You know, I love that because I think you can see people doing that sometimes, whether they really know that they're doing it or not. But it's it's kind of a an interesting part of being a part, being in the animal kingdom. You know, that we do, we were joking about the bears, but we truly do need to, you know, emphasize our being. And, and I love the word expanding um, presence. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, you're, you're sort of psyching yourself up for, yeah. for another term. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and building confidence, right? That like, we're going to stand there. We're, we're, we've already done our run or our meditation or yoga practice, whatever that is. We've shifted our energy, which was tip number two, you know, from nervousness to passion. And now we're like, I'm going to say like locking that in, you know, locking that in, expanding our presence with confidence so that when we, when we take the podium or we take the stage or we take the microphone, right? Like we're really coming from a place of poised presence and confidence. So Mm -hmm. I love that for tip number three. So move us into tip four, which I can't believe we're going uh, so quickly. There's a lot. I know there's a lot to cover. (laughs) You you work with a lot of different organizations, but we have here stage fright. Tip number four is to slow down. So talk to us about this one, Ashley. Certainly. So you see like the the progression of tips here. We're getting sort of closer to being at the main event. And so now step four or tip four, you've, you've walked out on stage, you've walked into that donor meeting, you've walked into that, that place that's given you potentially that nervousness in the beginning. And now you need to be present and aware of what's going on. And one of the things is learning to speak with a certain level of pacing, okay. looking for those pauses, being aware of how you are projecting on your audience. Because again, if we let that nervous energy take hold, 
we often will start talking really quickly and we won't be able to understand and we'll be moving around and it'll be, you know, versus mm -hmm. I'm here, we're going to talk about this topic. It's going to be really valuable for you. Here's how it's going to work. Let's get started. And learning how to use your, your voice and your pacing to capture attention and also calm your nerves a little bit more. Because again, you are the subject matter expert. You have the knowledge that people are there to hear. And so you want to help make sure it's, it's heard, it's understood, it's easily processed. And so if you can slow down and just get comfortable with those pauses, <laughs> it's going to help serve you. That I love it. And just as you shared that example with us, you know, when you exercised the, the fast talk, the lack of pauses, like already my, my nervousness, my anxiety was like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's so much noise in our world right now. There's so many distractions. And I'm imagining you, Ashley, presenting on a big stage, a lot of people you know, people are checking their emails, either on their laptops, their phones, their watches, like whatever, whatever, you know, smarty device they're using. <laughs> um, and then having the speaker, you know, even project that energy, I think just continues more of that mm -hmm. more fast pace. But as you then demonstrated that exercise and slowed down, it immediately drew me back to like being present. Right. Yeah. Present. Yeah, in it's, the moment. It's amazing the power of a pause. <laughs> when true. you hold that space, whether you're on a Zoom yeah. call or you're in a, in a room with, with people, mm -hmm. that pause, you know, you'll suddenly, the people will kind of perk up because they're, wait, what happened? There's a pause. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly powerful as a tool for kind of capturing attention, also maintaining that pace. Mm -hmm. And and ultimately, it's about communicating your message more effectively so it's heard. So, Ashley, let me ask a question about this, because I I know that with me and, and I do a lot of public speaking, you know, you you do work hard to amp yourself up and to go out there and be strong and build confidence and all that. But there's also that point where you have to, quote, read the room. And I find that I go in like troughs like I'm. Okay, I gotta go faster. Okay, I gotta go slower. I gotta go, you know. Where do we do that? How, how does that fit into this? Or does it is it just not part of this conversation? No, no it, it is very much part of this conversation. And, and I mean, I think both of you, with the amount of time you've been doing public speaking and being on stage, you probably have a pretty good intuitive sense for mm -hmm. what the room is feeling and kind of the energy. Yeah. And so as people do more of this and start to build that confidence, you become very present and very aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is really reading that energy. And so it doesn't mean, you know, when we talk about slowing down, this doesn't mean minimizing that energy, that passion that you have. Um, you can still modulate the pitch of your voice and get high and get low and get excited, but it's really about just putting those consistent pauses in between your words. Um, I was at an event many years ago, and I've always remembered this because it was a panel discussion, and it was maybe the third person speaking. It's probably 45 minutes into this. And it was a giant room, and uh, the energy was just really low at this point. Mm -hmm. And the next speaker, he, he took the microphone off the table, oh. got up out of his chair, and walked out into the audience. <laughs> and suddenly, every, everybody perked up because mm -hmm. he was kind of, he was sort of breaking the norm of what was expected here. And so what he was really doing was doing a great job of reading the room and mm -hmm. saying, I have to change the energy in here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, very simple technique. Uh, I talk about this a lot in terms of moving around the stage, yeah. moving around the space is another really good way to kind of capture attention mm -hmm. and again, read the room. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, but it's, it's kind of one of those things, you know, you just, you do more and more of this, you start to become more present. Mm -hmm. uh, I find, I don't know if you, any of you have this, but when I get off stage, I'm almost like physically kind of tired and exhausted oh. because I have been so kind of on. I'm listening to the little conversations while I'm also thinking about kind of what I'm talking about next. And I've got slides, I've got that, or I'm clicking or whatever. And it's, yeah. there's a lot going on, but I'm highly tuned into all of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Before we go on, Jared, mm -hmm. and I'll, then I'll-, I'll No, I have a question too. <laughs> um, 
so I love, I, I, I always learn a lot from you and I, I love your comments. Is there a time where these things, um, these tips differ from like, say that boardroom where it's a lot more intimate and sometimes more fearful versus a big room or an auditorium where maybe there's lighting and you can't even really see the audience past the first couple rows. Do these things kind of still work depending on the audience size? Yeah, all of what we've talked about is is applicable to any situation because really it's about person. It's very personal. How do you feel? Like getting on stage can be terrifying for some, maybe not for others. Walking into a room of three people could be terrifying, and so it varies depending on on your situation. But all of these are very much applicable. I would say, for example, if you're walking out on stage, there's going to be a different type of energy and presence you're going to have. Versus I'm walking into a small room, we're going to be talking with two or three people, it's much more intimate. Mm -hmm. But I think what remains the same is like being very present, mm -hmm. being really tuned in to the energy of what's going on there. Um, I've been in situations where it's a small group, but people are sort of spread out. And, uh, but it's in a small room and the person speaking literally like says, okay, let's all get in close. And they pulled up a chair and sat down in front of everybody. Yeah. And again, it changed that energy. But what they were doing was like being very present. They were reading the room and they were seeing that people were kind of spread out. They weren't really engaged. Mm -hmm. And so whoop, we'll change the energy. And yeah. so it's, it's very much about being present. I, I like to think about it as being adaptable. You know, mm -hmm. what are you going to do in these situations? How are you going to change the energy? How are you going to bring sort of focus back to you? Mm -hmm. Or how are you going to really build that relationship with the person you're speaking to? Because mm -hmm. whether it's, it's a stage or it's one-to-one -one in a small room, you're building a relationship and creating a, a dialogue. Yeah, or virtual, as we have Ooh, here yes. and over the last three years, many, you know, galas have been, been performed virtually, many presentations to donors have been uh, done virtually. So I want to touch on that adaptability before we get to our final uh, stage fright tip, Ashley. And it's about, it's, it is with slowing down, but it has to do with what if you've been told you have a set amount of time and then all of a sudden yeah. that time amount has been shifted and you now have to go from what you've, what you've practiced to something more condensed in like the drop of a hat, right? So how does that fall into these tips? And in particular, I'm, I'm thinking of it for the slow down moment because you do want to deliver in such a way that is um, received. But if you have so much more content, mm -hmm. how does that play a, a, a part of this? Certainly. Well, it comes down to, to preparation and really having clarity on, on what you're going to speak about. And mm -hmm. so when I work with my clients, many times what I'll have them do is we will create for example, stories. I usually recommend people have three to five key stories that speak to maybe different audience segments, speak mm -hmm. to different audiences that they serve. Mm -hmm. um, and so that they can be, you know, just pull that out when they need to. And so when we work on that, we'll come up with, here's the, you know, the, the two minute version. Here is the 30 second version. Here's the bullet point. Mm -hmm. And so it's very much about having real clarity <clears throat> about your message and can you deliver it in a long and a short form? Uh, that's really, really important. Cause if whatever you're saying, if you can only do it in five minutes, yeah. it's not as great a piece of communication as knowing that hey, I can do that. If you want, if you have five minutes, let's get into the details. If I have one minute, let me give you the high level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause the whole idea is that you want to entice someone to learn more. And so if you have three minutes, what can I share with you to entice you? There was a great, um, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell had a, a great, it was one of his books. He was talking about this idea that you want to give people a piece of candy before you serve them the meal. And so, you know, what are those little bits of candy that you can throw out when someone says, hey, I'm sorry, I know we were going to have 15 minutes, but unfortunately, I've only got five. Mm -hmm. okay, what kind of candy can you drop about your cause, your story, your organization that's going to pique them to want to sit down for the meal and learn more. Yeah, I love it. I think so that's good. brilliant. And, that, and I think that's, that's appropriate. The last thing that you share with us is um, overcoming stage fright. Tip number five, don't forget to smile. I, this was kind of not an expected thing. What does that, what does that mean? Well, it's, it comes back to kind of the fact that we're all human beings and we all are social animals. We're social creatures. Yeah. And so 
when I am looking at an audience or looking at an individual, they are mirroring back the energy that I am putting out. And so if I am enthusiastic, I am present, I am focused, it's more than likely you're going to get that type of energy back. And a smile is sort of the, it's a universal sort of power move yeah. to get people to connect with you and respond. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's, uh, we say, even with masks, I found, you know, walking around, you'd be in the grocery store and you make eye contact with someone and whatever the situation is. And, and just the little kind of the shift in your, mm -hmm. your eyes and your cheeks, like you see the other person respond. Mm -hmm. And so smiling is powerful. And uh, I recommend everyone do that. And one last tip on that, we were talking about virtual meetings and many of us are still doing Zoom calls and virtual meetings is you wanna be looking at your camera as though that is the other person that you're speaking to. I've watched far too many presentations or talks where the person is, you know, they're, they're talking like this through the whole thing or they're looking at another screen. And so you're getting the side of my head. I am laser focused on the camera to the point where I, I, it's a little tough. I have to, both of you are in my periphery now because I want to make sure I'm looking at the camera. Yeah. One of the things I did, one of the things I did early on in the pandemic to remind myself of this is I actually had a little post-it note and I drew a smiley face on it and yeah. stuck it right next to the camera yeah. so that it reminded me to like, look at the camera and smile, be present. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's been a really helpful tool for me, so. That has been one of our tips as yes, well with yeah. all of our guests, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing too that I've seen, Ashley, as we close up today's conversation is what I, uh, you know, refer to as, as, I don't even know if this is appropriate, but the Kilroy effect where it's like, you can only see here, you know, <laughs> and it's like lift, like switch, switch that. Yeah. And so, you know, seeing that as well, there's so many things to consider and really, you know, your position, be it on a camera screen, be it on a stage, be it in a boardroom, mm -hmm. right? Your positioning is so important. And that goes right along with smiling mm -hmm. at your audience. <laughs> I love it. Ashley, it's always such a, a wonderful thing to hear your perspective. And literally, I did get these glasses when, because I did think of you. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's just hilarious. But I'm telling you, I love what you have to say. You always give us great information that's very achievable. And so I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, Ashley Bright, CEO, TheMessageFixer.com. Ashley, you've got some exciting things that I, I don't want to let you go without addressing really quickly. What's cooking, my friend? Well, thank you for the opportunity. So I had the pleasure last year of doing some work with the Alliance for Arizona Nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I put together a six-part series of workshops for nonprofits. And you the, the wonderful thing is that you can take all six of these, and if you go through the process, you can create your own presentation. You can deal with a lot of the things we've just talked about, stage presence and stage fright and things like that. And you can truly develop a powerful presentation that you can deliver in all sorts of situations. The other nice thing is that if you wanna just jump in to one of them or two of them, it's really flexible in that regard. And so we're gonna be covering how to plan and prepare for a presentation, how to use story and emotion, how to integrate data and facts, how to have that stage presence, whether you're on video or whether you're physically present in the room. Mm -hmm. Also, the last one, we talk about adaptability. So mm -hmm. what happens when you go from having 10 minutes to having three minutes? Mm -hmm. Or what happens when you're expecting to be able to deliver your presentation? And then they're like, no, 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 we just want to ask you a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. How do you adapt mm -hmm. to that? And exactly. so we're, we're going to be sort of rolling this out probably mid-April. Okay. And so if anyone out there watching this at any time is interested, please just send me an email. Mm -hmm. Ashley at the message fixer.com and just put in the subject line nonprofit workshops and I'm awesome. happy to follow up with you. So awesome. I might be one of those people, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, yeah. I, I hope you I hope you wear my glasses though. <clears throat> oh yeah. Well here, I got it. I gotta get the glasses back on because truly they are fabulous. Um, they are. They're I love fabulous. It. I love they're, it. they're a little kooky, but with you today, they work. Hey, everybody, this has been amazing. And we would not be here getting all of this wisdom from Ashley Bright without the support and the help of our sponsors. They have been amazing. As we move into our fourth year of broadcasting, actually, I think happens 
next week or today i'm not really sure where where the the date is i have to look that up but again our thanks to bloomerang american nonprofit academy your part-time controller nonprofit thought leader fundraising academy at national university staffing boutique the nonprofit nerd herself and nonprofit tech talk these folks are with us day in and day out and as we like to end every episode we want to remind ourselves our viewers our listeners our guest, our co-host, to stay well yeah. so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Ashley, thank you so much.